So let's take a look at an example of a mixed methods research study from our literature. I think that this one uh, both topically will be interesting, but also the methodology is kind of a typical example of how these two types of research designs will be combined. So the title of this article uh, is Team Sport Athletes Perceptions and Use of Recovery Strategies a mixed methods survey study. Now think about this, like if your goal was to figure out, you know, what type of recovery strategies or techniques do athletes use, uh, you could go about studying that in a number of ways. But I think it's not only useful to understand what techniques they use, but also maybe why they use them. What are they hoping to get from them? And that's what this study attempted to do, to look at the use of different strategies and their perceptions. What do these strategies provide for them? You know, what are they looking to get out of this recovery uh, uh, technique or recovery treatment? So the purpose of the study was to investigate recover recovery techniques, usage, and perceptions for team sport athletes. They also did this looking at athletes from a variety of different levels, you know, national team members, international athletes, uh, and so on. This was an exploratory study in that little previous research was done in this area. And often in these types of exploratory studies, you'll see mixed methods used because one, they want to capture some data, uh, you know, numerical data about how frequently different techniques are utilized, but they also want to get to the understanding of the whys. Why do people choose these? So often we'll see this uh, combination used, mixed methods, uh, research designs utilized when, uh, you know, authors or researchers are kind of first jumping into a new area. And that's the case here in this study for sure. So um, first question, again, as a review kind of of the different subcategories of mixed methods designs, uh, you know, was this study a mixed methods sequential study or a mixed methods concurrent study? Remember, in a sequential study, one technique is used first, followed by another, or they're utilized simultaneously. So to find this out for this particular study, we can jump to their methods. And I copied and pasted this from their methods. It says to determine the popularity of specific recovery strategies and the reasons uh, for use, a survey was deployed that consisted of questions requiring a combination of checkbox, Likert scale, and open-ended free text responses. So this tells me that they did one survey uh, one time, and this survey included both uh, these quantitative questions, the checkbox Likert scale, as well as the open-ended free text questions. So the quantitative component of this study would be the checkbox and Likert scale questions. The qualitative component would be these open-ended questions where students, or participants I should say, were allowed to elaborate on the reasons for their choices. So these were done at the same time, so this was a concurrent study. Since they occurred in the same survey, it's a concurrent study, and since the open-ended questions were really equally weighted, you know, when they presented the results, they talked a lot, the researchers, you know, uh, showed a lot of detail from both the qualitative and the quantitative data. So this would be a triangulation mixed methods study that was done in a concurrent fashion. Not that that's really important for you in terms of understanding the study, but again, so that you, end, you, you have an idea of the different ways to go about mixing these methods. So let's look at some of the findings and uh, talk about whether they're quantitative or qualitative. Uh, first, here's an example of quantitative data from that study. Remember, because it's numbers, it's percentages, it's frequencies of use. And what this uh, uh, figure shows, and I've only uh, shown you the bottom two parts of it, it compared national, you know, uh, I guess this is US athletes to international athletes, and said which of these recovery methods do they use the most. 
Um, and again, 100% of the international athletes, for instance, utilized massage as a recovery technique versus of the athletes in uh, the national athletes, that number was, you know, maybe 70%. So we see some differences. Again, it allows us to look at what types of recovery techniques are used most frequently, which ones least frequently, and then also within these groups to see if there are maybe differences in their frequency of use and so on. So this would tell me that international athletes are much more likely to use massage than national athletes and so on. So uh, again, an example of qualitative or sorry, quantitative data from this study. An example of some of the qualitative things that they discovered uh, we're more looking at, again, the comments, the, the frequency of these type of comments in these different treatment techniques. So again, when they looked at people that utilized active land-based recovery techniques like walking, um, the physical benefit that they reported in the open-ended questions were things like, you know, improves range of motion, loosens their joints or their extremities, you know, reduces injury. These were some of the comments that they utilized in these free text answers. So you can see that this also conveys some useful information. So when they did use this category of activity, um, what were the reasons that they saw? What did they feel it did for them? And so on. This is another table from that same article. And what would you say this is? Is this an example of qualitative or quantitative data? What they are showing here is the most popular post game or match recovery session. So what did they do after they played a game? Um, and it tells us how many people participated in uh, the active land-based activities. And if they did active land-based activities, which one did they do? And they said walking was the, the most common with 69 people doing this. How long did they do it for? Uh, the greatest number, uh, greatest response was 10 minutes. And when did they do it? Within one hour was the most frequently uh, utilized response. So again, this shows us the frequency of the use of different types of, of, of recovery and how they performed those recoveries. So is this quantitative or qualitative? Obviously it's quantitative, right? Because it's numerical data, it tells us how many people fell into each of these categories. But again, you can see how both the qualitative and the quantitative information uh, is useful, but it's even more useful when we consider it together. So I think this is a great example of a mixed methods study, and it shows the advantages of utilizing both methods as opposed to using just one by itself. Because the subject's per perception of the value of these different uh, uh, techniques and the reasons that they want to use it is going to be very important in addition to the actual frequency of its use. So uh, anyway, that brings this unit to a close. The references for this uh, uh, presentation uh, include, again, the textbook that we've been utilizing throughout this course, uh, by Baudry and Miller, which is Research Literacy, a primer for understanding and using research. And then we also utilized uh, the article by uh, Crowther et al., where they examined team sports athletes' perceptions and use of recovery strategies. I'll provide a copy of this article for you, a full copy of this article for you to review as well, uh, as it probably is an interesting uh, read uh, for all of us that are interested in, in human movement and recovery.